Hey team, welcome back to my channel. In this video, we're going to dumpster dive into some more AdventureWorks database. This video is where they start getting hard. So let's do this together. Are you ready? If you have already used example one and two, you'll notice in example three here, we have a new object, employee pay. And the complicated part of this is other pay. It is an array of strings. We'll get through this together. Let's do it. If you're wondering how I made this JSON layout, I did it with serialization. Let's see how I did it. It all started with designing a few class objects. In this project, the only thing that's new is on line 40 and 41. I added other pay and the employee pay object. Look on line 49, I'm actually going to create the object with create department list. Look on line 86 how I was able to give an array of strings, overtime, holiday pay, and vacation pay. In example three, our object is getting bigger. Bigger means more fields. More fields means more data. Take your time, step through it, and you'll do it. Okay, this finishes up the create object. Now let's just serialize it. Let us model this JSON from raw. Notice I want to just call my class AdventureWorks list. So we're going to be using the list notation. Remember in our first video, I showed you that the department could be either an array or a list, and they both um, deserialize the same. So let us begin. So what I'm going to say first is a, a public string, and you see version. And we're going to get set that. Now the spelling has to be identical. So no uppercase, lowercase. You put what the case is over here. Notice if you want to use some kind of notation that puts underscores in your characters, you need to change your, your JSON. But this needs to map to this. So our next item here is look at this. We have an object. See, key value. The value is an array. It's an array. So how are we going to do that? Well, we learned in the first one, I can also use a list. So I'm going to do that. So what do I say here? Public list. And then what are we going to call that? Well, I don't have any choice but to call this department. So I'm going to come over here and put department here and then say get set. And then notice I'm just going to say underscore department here. Now, this is just the way I do it. I could be right, I could be wrong, but it seems like this pattern works for me successfully all the time. So the next thing we need to do is we need to define this, this class object. So what do we say here? We say public class underscore department and then open close curly. Now when you see department over here, what kind of fields are we going to associate this with? Well, we're going to do a department ID. That looks like an integer. So what do I say here? I say uh, public int get set and uh, name is going to be a string. So what do I say? Uh, public string get set and uh, group name. public string get set and then uh, modify date now here's the question this right here looks like a string but when we deserialize that does it go in as a string or a date time let's try date time I'm hoping that's what it will go to so now I have another object, and the object is called employee. So I can't continue on here. I have to create another object. And how would I do that? Well, public class underscore employee. And then we come back up to this guy, and then what do we say here? Well, it is a list, right? Look here. Do we have an array? Notice it goes from here. Uh, I wish this would line up better, 
But uh, you can see this one goes all the way down to this one, right? Uh, bam to bam, bam to bam, yes. So that one goes all the way down to here. And the reason we know that that's an array is because of this bracket. So how can we do this in here? Well, we learned in video one that can either be a list or an array. Let's uh, stay in a list. So what do we say? Public list underscore employee. And what do we have to call it here? Well, we cannot be creative. We have to come over here and just take this as it is. And that is the way it is. Uh, get set. Now, what kind of fields are an employee? Well, it's kind of easy. It's the same thing that we did for department. So what do we have? We have login ID. I'll say what, so I don't have to do all that typing. Let's uh, block copy this. So the first one is login ID, right? Control C that. And then the next one is job title. Okay, and oh, what is this? Now, employee pay, key value, but value is an object. So what have we learned? Well, I've got to go create another object. And what is that object called? That object is called employee pay. So what do we say here? Public class underscore employee pay. Now, once again, this has, look at that, it's a date time, some kind of float, and an integer, and then an array. So how do we do that? Well, let's uh, come get this and we can go fast. So what do we have, uh, four fields? So the first one is a, uh, a date time. Our second field is a float. Our third field is an integer. And our fourth one, oh, this is another type. But we can actually do this in line because this just looks like an array. And all we have to do is come in here and say, that looks like a string array. So a string array. Okay. So let's go name these things appropriately. Control C those over. Control V. Rate. And then uh, frequency. And then over to or other pay. And okay, so now job title. So it came down here, and I had to say public list. Actually, that's not a list, it's a single object, right? So notice here, notice that we say key value, key value, but here, key, and that's an object and not an array of objects, just an object. So we just say underscore employee pay, and what are we gonna say here? Just employee pay. Get set. So looking at this, I believe this is the structure that we want, and now we can deserialize. Let's go look at that other code. Let's go ahead and run this code. I'll meet you on line 25, 29, I'm sorry. Let's add an ad watch on departments and let's step through this. Okay, departments. Oh, we see count. We know what count is now. It's a list. And we have two items in our list. And department ID one, employee count two. We know that's a list. And we got two items in there as well. Notice that we have employee pay. Looks like it's just an object. Other pay is a string array. Should have three, one, two, three. We have our variables. It is a date time variable. So everything worked out as we thought. And this example three is all done.